Pets, I'm back and today I have a very special video for you. I don't usually mess with a thing that works, but today we're changing things up. And why is that, you might ask? Because this is a special day. I know what I wanted to say. <laughs> today is a special day because we just hit 100,000 subscribers. <gasps> Cue the applause. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> for real though, thank you guys because honestly, 100,000 of you guys decided I'm all right. I wouldn't have gotten this far without you guys and I just wanted to take the time to say thank you. So instead of a standard regular video this week, you guys get one that has taken me three or so months to do. And that is why today's video is different. On that note, for my 100,000 subscriber video, I had to do something crazy, obviously, because I'm trying to improve and do all these fun things for you guys. So I went out and bought a Polly Pocket toy. But not just any Polly Pocket toy, because although that would be fun and you guys are interested in them now, you're welcome, um, I had to do something over the top and massive. So I bought a huge sealed complete in box Polly Pocket Pollyville super set. I'll wait for my applause. No, I'm just joking. Um, yes, no, for real though. I spent $450 Canadian. I wouldn't be able to buy the stuff that I do if you guys weren't interested in seeing it. That's the only way I get things. So keep liking the Polly convinced my husband somehow to take me hundreds of kilometers to pick this up. And then, yeah, that's metric, by the way. So that's like tens of miles, I don't know. And we decided to make a vlog style video along the way. Now, please do not heavily critique this because I am not a vlogger. I just didn't want you guys to miss out on some of the fun that we had as we went because it's all part of the experience, okay? It was like a full journey to get this item for you guys. So we're gonna check that out real quick and then don't worry, cause once it's done and it's short, we'll come back here and open, be the only ones on YouTube, by the way, open up a new inbox Polyville superset. And don't worry, we will go into excruciating detail because this is the only one, okay? In case anyone else ever wants to know what's in there, you'll find it through me. With that in mind, let's get started. I'm just joking. <laughs> Watch the video. All right, let's hit the road. trip needs a good fast food stop. Snug life. If you haven't tried it, oh I'm choking on a nugget. If you haven't tried it yet, you need to try nuggets with McChicken sauce. It's not gross. Well it might be for you, but you can't knock it till you've tried it. I have to pee so bad. We have officially gone to the bathroom. I feel 10 times better. And now, since I feel 10 times better, here's the top 10 reasons why Polly Pockets are awesome. They are tiny and cute and I never really had them. I only got to play with a few other people's and then I had one and then I lost one. That's five. And now I'm older and I'm gonna buy them all because I want to and they're tiny and cute and those are good enough reasons. tips on trying to find your very own Polly Pockets to start your collection, I would definitely recommend thrifting. The best way to find them is to go to, we have Value Village, but other places have Savers. Savers is our Value Village, but there's also Goodwill and probably numerous other types of thrift locations. And that's gonna be your best bet for finding them. However, do not be sad if you can't find people because that is actually extremely rare. That's gonna be the cheapest place you'll ever find them. If that doesn't work out for you and you insist on being like me and weird and trying so hard to collect something that has no value to anyone but yourself, snow, sorry, then 
Your next bet would be Kijiji. You got eBay. And then we have like Virage Sale and Facebook Marketplace. That's where I found this one. The only problem with that, that's why I recommend thrifting, is that if you do like shopping from an online seller, they know the value of a nostalgic toy and they will charge so much for it, especially if it actually comes with people. So make sure they have good reviews if that's an option for your buying site or take a very good look at all the pictures, make sure the people come with it and stuff like that and then kind of gauge the price and what you're willing to spend. So I think recently I paid $25 for a small compact that came with two dolls and that's actually really, really great because some people will actually just sell the compacts with no dolls for like $40, which is insane if you ask me but they know full well that you can charge more when you've got people we are five minutes away guys I'm like beyond excited right now now your absolute last resort should always be eBay because it's gonna cost the most that it ever can cost remember that the other sellers will charge more because they know they can and unfortunately people buy it because that's their only option but on eBay it gets insane from there if you're trying to buy people only I've seen them for like $20 US plus shipping and ours actually will cost more so if I was to find and I'm about to I'm only explaining this and it seems like way too much info because I'm about to prove why I'm willing to spend $450 in two seconds so on eBay if I was to open or not open but purchase a brand new unopened small compact Polly Pocket playset that's new in box never been touched they go for about $236 US plus shipping so for me I'm not saying it's worth that but that's what they're all kind of generally charging so for me that would cost almost $350 to get one pocket that has not been opened. So I actually found on the Facebook Marketplace a giant Polyville super set, new in box, never opened, and I nearly lost my dang mind, and she was charging $500. So obviously I'm not gonna spend that kind of money if I don't have to, even if the item is about 30 years old and untouched, which is unheard of. Um, I get why she's charging that much, and realistically, when you see what's in it, it's totally worth it, but <laughs> I had to still try to talk her down. So I messaged her and I asked her, any chance you're willing to go down in price? And she knocked off 50 bucks and I was like, done. I'm not even gonna push it anymore. That's great. So 450 in, and now we're probably about three minutes away. I'm, I don't even know. I'm surprisingly calm, but on the inside, I'm like bubbling like a kettle that's gonna whistle really loudly, but that would hurt your ears. So I know you're all super stoked to see what I got and I'm not gonna fail you. I'm gonna let you quickly see it. Here it is. How amazing is this thing? Am I right? Just look at all that 90s fun. I can't wait to have fun with it. I'm so sorry to do this to you, but we went all the way to Niagara Falls. So we have to show you some of the cool things that we did when we were there. Just, just real quick. And then when you come back, we'll open this. I swear we are. I'm just postponing because I've been building up to this and I'm actually kind of scared too. What if I mess it up? <laughs> Anyways, here is Niagara. We are over at the table and it's time to open our beautiful, glorious Polyville super set. In case you haven't noticed or you're wondering, it is a new day. I have changed my appearance because it took up quite a bit of nerve to have faith in my abilities to not screw this up. This is special to me, okay? <laughs> I love you, boss. I'm so scared. 
What you see before you now is the absolutely stunning Polly Pocket Polyville Super Set. The stuff of my dreams. Once upon a time, this would have retailed at $100, which would have seemed like a very large price tag back then. But uh, if only those people could see how crazy I am now, spending $450 on it. But let us not forget that I saved 50 because she wanted five. So who's winning now? This loser right here. <laughs> all right, this is a magical miniature town of precious little places for Polly Pocket and all of her special friends. It's gorgeous, okay? Somebody spent a lot of time to make this look like a beautiful little village, don't you think? I think I should replicate this. Put a giant like if you think I should do that. Anyways, this is going to include 10 gorgeous open up play sets. We'll get 28 different characters and three very cute pets. And we're also going to get a 24 by 36 inch Polyville play mat. Ooh, this is for ages four and up because in case you don't know anything about Polly, they are super tiny. Super choking hazard, okay? Don't put them in your mouth, ever. Um, without further ado, and before I lose all my confidence, we're gonna open this up. It's gonna be long, okay? It's gonna be long. Get some snacks, guys. And that was the front of the box. Here is the top. Oh, it's so hard to see. But they do show us 28 characters. Oh, my 90s dream. This is beautiful, isn't it? The answer you're looking for is yes. <laughs> Here is the back of the box. It says Polly Pocket Polyville Super Set. Become a big collector of the tiny world of Polly Pockets. Welcome to the wonderful miniature world of Polyville, a whole town full of fun and exciting places for Polly Pocket and all of her friends. The only key you need to enter is your imagination. I feel as though there's a comma missing there. Let's begin our special tour through Polyville as we meet Polly's good friends and neighbors and discover all the great surprises in her wonderful town. We can see all the buildings and little houses that are going to be in the town, and then there's a little blur about each one, which also mentions who comes in each set. So you kind of have an idea of who goes with what. But instead of reading all this and boring you now, I'm gonna take them all out of the box and then set them up. And then as we're quickly looking at it in silence, Jen's gonna break that silence by reading the blurb about it. And then we'll take a little tour of it. Sounds good. I think that's the only way to do it without boring you. So let's get started. I already took the time to delicately slice the tape because I was nervous. It smells like the 90s. No, it smells like someone's attic or something. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if I knew what the 90s smelled like? I'm not that lame. Says the girl sniffing a box. You know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna lie it down this way so that I can pull it out. There's no turning back now. Ooh, look at all that 90s tape. Oh. My. Polly. Oh my gosh, they're all individually wrapped, sort of, kind of, not really. <gasps> What? I wish I could lift it up without them all falling apart. Do you see this? There's a 90 day limited warranty. Can I still claim that if anything's wrong? <gasps> okay. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Oh. Ah! I dropped the box. But I didn't drop this one. Look at that. Stay. The box is safe. Instead of a bunch of fancy angles, I'm literally just gonna show you what I am seeing. So I've got this propped up, and now you can see what I mean. So all the little characters are wrapped and sealed in their own plastic. All the little houses are wrapped and such. And then it looks like our playmat is just going right across the top. So what we'll do is just start with the playmat. Um, it is possible that once I open this, I'll have to flatten it under books. It has been rolled up for about 30 years. But first, we'll see what we're working. Tape, 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 tape. Oh, looks like that tape broke. Ooh, here we go, here we go. It smells like a basement. Ooh, oh, it's so bright. There's some discoloration across it. There's some yellow and pink lines and some fading. Guess we can't complain. Oh, that's really nice looking. So I'm gonna let this go under a towel anyways, even though it's not actually rolling up as much as I thought it would, just because the ends are trying to curl in on themselves. So we'll let that flatten out. That way we'll be able to see it better on the table later. Now I'm trying to figure out how to take these out because they're in fitted squares. I don't want to ruin them. So my plan is to take these, oh, they're glued. Take them out and then set them on the table and then we'll start filming the way I usually would so you guys can see it better. Unfortunately, I think the only way to do this is going to be rip one small portion of the box to start getting them out. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm already exhausted. Guess if I'm glue those. If you want to feel all reminisce with me, imagine the oldest smelling attic basement you ever smelled times like 30. Ooh, one, two. Give me my toy! Yo, the 90s had quality glue. Ow. You probably can't see that, but that one really hurt. Like, my hands are so red. Bye-bye, box. 
This right here is a beautiful pastel scene of 90s dreams and we're about to open it. And I've decided I'm going to open up the play sets in the order shown on the back of the box. I believe it started with the chapel. Ooh, very strong tape. Here is our chapel. It's all purple with a pink roof, some nice brickwork, white framed windows, yellow doors, purple picket fence, the very classic pink poly sidewalk, some plants and shrubs and grass, and a really cute stained glass window there with a dove. Up here, this yellow chimney is actually gonna be the button that turns on and off the lights once we add the batteries. And they're gonna go right in the back of the chimney. I'll do that in just a sec. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be so hard to show off but I will. This is the inside. Up here we've got a little banquet area. The door is actually open. Oh my gosh. It's a really weird place for the candles and the ceremony book because there's a toilet right there, but we don't judge. There's a present table, lots of teal and pink gifts, banquet table, but only three guests can eat. And there's a set of stairs here hidden behind the efficient. We've got a gold and pink organ, some pews, the chapel door is open, there's some shrubs in there, it's really cute. Then over here, we've got some pink steps leading up to the bridal suite where the bride gets ready. There's also a little party room with some speakers and balloons down there. Fake little mirror, mirror out of vanity, super cute. I'm gonna go ahead and put the batteries in so that we'll be able to see it light up. Click one, turns on a little light behind the stained glass window. Click two, turns on a light up in the bridal suite. And the third click, turns on both sets of lights. Four, turns it off. You can't see it very well, but if I click just once on the inside, the candles are dimly lit. Anything inside? No. Click two, the chandelier in that bridal suite. Third click, turns on everything. So that's the chandelier, the dimly lit candles, as well as the stained glass window. Let's find the characters that go with this playset. That would be these ones right here. We've got Peter, Nancy, Polly, and Midge. So the exciting thing about getting this playset is I've mentioned before how hard it is to get Polly characters, let alone getting ones that actually belong to specific playsets. So I'm pretty stoked right now. Wait, where does this go? Pretty confident that it goes right here. There we go. Oh, and this window is actually a clock. It's hard to see it, but it is. All right. We have to zoom in on you, Peter. He's a blonde little Polly character. He's got pink shoes, a purple necktie, and a gray suit. He's wearing a gray top hat with a purple ribbon around it so that he matches the rest of his wedding attire. He looks pretty happy because he's getting married today. This is Midge. She's wearing a blue dress with long sleeves. She's got teal shoes and a teal sun hat with a white ribbon around it. And she's got some short orange hair and she's ready to watch her friends get married or fall off a bench. Sit down. Sit down. Good enough. Here's Polly in her bridesmaid's dress. It's long and pink with lots of frills in the bottom. She's wearing a light pink bow tie around her neck. She's got a flower garland in her hair and a bouquet in her hand. And on the back bustle, she's got a light pink bow. We're running out of space over here. Here's Nancy the bride and she's kind of really weird because it looks like her arms are up really, really high. Like, think of the chicken dance. That's what her hands are posed as and she's holding her pink bouquet. She's got a white veil on with a big flower wreath and greenery around her head. Long brown hair. Her bouquet is pink and she's got a lot of bustle in her white wedding gown with pink shoes. But the cool thing here is that this actually comes off very carefully. You can take off her skirt to change her look so she can go to her little after party and everything later. However, now she just looks weird with her arms up in that pose carrying flowers around, don't you think? And here's the skirt that came off. This is the back. It's a long train and behind the bustle there's a light pink bow. And her skirt was pink underneath. She's the runaway bride. <laughs> Let's put them inside of the actual chapel. Here we are at the chapel for a Polyville wedding. The lights shine through the window during the special moments while Polly is the bridesmaid for Peter and Nancy. Midge lights the candles for the ceremony. After the wedding, let's visit Mayor Polly in her beautiful home. All right then, let's get the home. Ta-da! This is Mayor Polly's house. It's a pink house with nice brickwork and a light blue roof. Lots of white framed windows, including two bay windows, a nice huge one for the main floor and a small one for the upper level with a little yellow balcony. She's got a pink picket fence, the classic Polly sidewalk, and even a little koi pond. Of course, we've got that chimney again and the little button. So this is gonna be a light up house. There's a purple door and it looks like we have some purple and teal balloons hanging out of the window for some reason. And on the back, there's a cat climbing the roof. Let's open up the first one. This is a little attic bed. 
bedroom. We have a little private bathroom, toilet, sink, a little bathroom mat there with some yellow stars on it, and a teal bathtub, and a small little bedroom. Just a dresser with some vanity items, a small purple bed, and some yellow steps that go up to the bathroom. And then this part here opens in one piece. Ta-da! On the main floor, we've got a kitchen with lots of little silver appliances. There's a saucepan, coffee maker, sink, counter, knives, oven, yellow stairs, covered under the stairs, wonder if Harry Potter's home, maybe. We've got a little white door that separates the kitchen from the rest of the main floor, and then a teal door that separates the bathroom from the rest of the main floor. And it's just a small little powder room, so there's only a toilet and a small sink. The living room has a small purple armchair and some food on a table. They're blocking the bay window, what a waste. <laughs> and that's just the entryway into the actual house. Up here on the top floor, we've got another bay window, this time with some bench seating, and there's some kind of light up thing on a table. We've got a very purple TV and a small telephone, and then a very big silver stereo system. And then we have a change room. So there's a vanity with mirror and such, a nice little tufted chair, and then a purple closet door with a mirror on it, and it actually opens. Inside we've got some hanging clothes. Now it's time to add batteries, which go in on the bottom. Ew, I'm a little confused. There's a lot of like acid buildup and yucky manky stuff, and I'm not sure how, because it's sealed and there's no battery in it, and it was new. That's weird. Maybe there was moisture in whatever place it was stored. Hopefully it still works. Ooh, it's super gross though. Now we're ready for business, so let's see what it powers. First click, there's a light on in the attic. So let's open it up and see what it is. Oh, just a little lamp on the table. Second click, I don't see what it is. And second click is nothing. The third click lights up the little light on this vanity. Fourth one lights up that cool whatever in the bay window. And the fifth click lights up both of the items on this floor as well as the one on this floor. So it lights up everything. And then the last one turns it all off. And now it's time to get our characters. So these are the four characters right here that we're gonna need. One, two, three, and four. And first up is Polly. She's wearing a light purple dress with a gold bow and gold shoes, as well as a gold headband in her hair. She's pretty simple and cute. And since she's the mayor, she could stand there to greet her guests. All right, so one thing that I'm gonna point out that I find funny is on the back of the box, they tell you the names of all these characters, but not who is who. So in order to figure it out, I also just decided that I would go to onlypollypocket.com, which is a great resource for anything that you need to know Polly Pocket. I looked up this exact house and they list totally different names for the same characters that are shown on the back of the box. This is still Polly, but this one here is listed as Emily. This one here is listed as Tamsin. And then this one here is Jessica. But on the back of the box, they've listed them as Mayor Polly. Polly, Shauna, Becky, and Tori. So isn't that funny? This one is also listed as the Polly Pocket Bay Window House or the Country House, but in this set it's listed as Mayor Polly's House. So maybe because it's technically a different set, all of a sudden it's different. Because if I look at the wedding chapel, it's listed as the right things, except that they also say that Nancy could be known as Kathy and that Peter could also be known as Robbie. So I don't know. I'm gonna go with the names on the website just because at least I know who is supposed to be who. So let's continue. Here is Tamsin. She's got dark skin, dark brown hair in pigtails with gold elastics. She's wearing a purple dress and shoes and also has a small gift in her hand. Let's see if we can get her to stand. No! Tamsin! There she goes. According to the website, this is Jessica. She's got red hair parted in the middle. She's wearing a blue dress with shoes and she's holding three balloons, pink, blue, and yellow. And she's heavy. Too heavy to stand. Here is Emily. She's got straight brown hair and she's got a pink and silver party hat on. She's wearing a yellow dress with a pink collar and pink shoes as well as a pink party blower in her hand. I think Polly will be the cook because she's got nothing in her hands. Don't you love how the dolls are bigger than their doors? Tamsin just got here with her gift. We've got Jessica up here partying on her own with her balloons. And we've got Emily slash Tori up on the top floor looking all strange on her own. Pretty awesome. Mayor Polly turns the lights on in her house for friends Shauna, Becky, and Tori, also known as Tams and Jessica and Emily. They watch the vanity light up too as they all get ready to go out for pizza, which leads us to the next place that we're gonna open, the pizza parlor. I think it's this one. 
here is our pizza parlor. Nope, they call this a light up pizzeria. Just disregard what I just said. It's a blue roofed white brick building with a pink, white, and blue awning on both levels. We've got the pink Polly Pocket brick. We've got four sets of chairs outside, two are silver, two are pink, with a corresponding opposite matching table. Did that make sense? Probably not. They've got some pizza slices and drinks on theirs. And this one here is a silver table with two pink chairs, just drinks, they're waiting on their food. And we've got the button on top of our chimney and we'll see what lights up once we add the batteries. Let's open the top level first. It's a little hard to see because it's so light, but we do have a bathroom up here. We've got yellow flooring, there's a purple carpet, two sinks, silver faucets, and a blue toilet. Yellow stairs leading up to the bathroom. Looks like it's a private dining area. We've got a blue bench corner seat with purple cushions, a silver table, some menus and drinks or shakers, as well as a single seated area with a silver chair, pink table, menu, and shakers or cups or whatever that might be. I think this is gonna light up here. Then on the main floor, woo, here is our pizzeria. Does this open? Oh my gosh, it does. I didn't expect that. Okay, so we've got a white tiled floor with a sticker mat, two opposite matching tables. So silver with the pink chair, pink with the silver chair. You get it by now. Purple and blue stairs leading upwards. We've got a pizza station over here. It looks like two pizzas are ready in the back. And here are our toppings to make some more. So sauces, cheeses, all that great stuff. Over here in this super hard to see spot, we've got a stove with a blue hood over top. Looks like there's a pizza ready. And then we've got steps leading into this oven. So I'm thinking it's like a chimney brick oven because it opens and I'm assuming that's gonna light up for us. Second floor is more seating. Silver table, two chairs, some plates and cups, pink table, silver chairs, plates and cups, and a jukebox. And then there's a moving floor here. So one of these, there you go. This is what we turn to make our characters dance. I'm gonna close it up now and add my battery, which is gonna be down here. All right, here we go. So we've got a sign that lights up on the first click. Second one is our oven. It's hard to see because it's bright in here, but the oven is lighting up. Anything else? Nope. Third click is the sign and the oven. And I think that's it. So I guess technically that one there might be lighting up, although it looks more like it's the floor that's lighting up than the jukebox. Now we'll get our characters and add them to the playset. And there's supposed to be Polly, Kelly, Tori, and Belinda, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, I drop my scissors. Oh, don't get lost, characters. All right, here's our Polly. She's got her curly yellow hair, pink headband. Looks like she's wearing blue pants and shirt and a purple jacket with purple shoes. That's about it. She wants to be a customer only. She's not about that work in life. Which leads us to our need for a chef or a cook. And that can be Tori slash Emily. <laughs> and it makes sense. She looks like she's ready to cook. She's got straight brown hair with a chef hat. She's got a blue dress on with a white apron, pink shoes, and a silver spoon in her hand. So let's just put her over here by all the food stuff so she can make us some pizza. Next up, we'll need a waitress. And there's no one better than whoever this girl is. She's got red hair in pigtails with some teal elastics. She's wearing a pink dress with a teal apron, purple shoes, and she's got a silver tray in her hand with a pizza on it. And we'll just set her up top there. Watch her go, Wee! She's gonna get dizzy. And then finally we have whoever this is. She's got dark skin, straight brown hair, a pizza slice in one hand, a drink in the other, a pink dress, and blue shoes. And since she has pizza in her hand, she might as well be somewhere that had pizza. So that seems perfect. And there we have it, our pizzeria. Now let's see what it said. Pizza is the official fun food of Pollyville. The outdoor sign and jukebox light up for Polly, Kelly, Tori, and Belinda the chef as they all take a spin on the dance floor before stopping off at the school. Oh, looks like the school is next. Here we go, here we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and add the basketball hoop. Here is our schoolhouse. It's a yellow building with white furnishings on the outside and a little clock, white framed windows, the classic poly sidewalk. We've got a pink and yellow basketball net, pink and white slide, and some grass. Over here, we have a lilac door and a little gold bell, and we can actually open this up. In this side of the building here, there's a music stand in teal with a pink piano and bench. And in the bottom there, I don't know what that's supposed to be, but we have two silver bikes. And now that we open that, we can see the school's crest and there's like a banner here. I guess we could have found out what the school was called. It's probably called Polyville School, <laughs> let's be honest. And then we've got a pink door. There's even somebody's kite trapped on the roof. And then this is where our battery is gonna be hidden. So we obviously have a button there. I wonder if we'll be able to hear a bell sound or something. When we open it up, it gets all kind of convoluted over here. It's one of the busier sets that I've seen. Let's see if I can focus. 
at all? The answer is no. Anyways, we've got a clock here and it looks like it's gonna light up. Two silver lockers and this door opened up. In that room, there's a purple chalkboard with one plus one equals three. Pink desk, two purple chairs. There's some notebooks there with chalk. Then in the back, we've got a single desk with a computer and keyboard and chair. We've got a small little bathroom there. And there's a single pink toilet and a double sink. We've got a set of pink and yellow stairs leading up to the top floor, which kind of looks like it's a place for eating. So I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's kind of like a gym because over here there's a trampoline and it looks like a mat to exercise on and like steps. And then we've got stickers on the wall, which are ladders, ropes, and gymnastic rings. I've got no clue what that is, but it's gonna light up. And over here, we've got seating for two in pink with place settings and utensils, as well as a sitting area for one. Then there's just a little buffet area with some fake food. So now I'm gonna add the batteries and find out what lights up. There we go. First one, oh, I think it's on the inside. Yep, whatever that thing was but it's glowing. Second thing that lights up is this clock over, fail. Oh, two things actually. We've got a hall light as well as this clock here. Third push, it's all three. So the hall light, the clock light, and whatever that was. Fourth click, turns it off. Now it's time to find the characters that go in this playset. Apparently I failed and I forgot to show me opening these, but you get the point. They are now opened. Ta-da! We can check them out. I think we could safely assume this is Miss Lila because she looks very much like an educator. She's got a long blue dress on with a white collar and her hair is pulled into a ponytail. In one hand, she's got a piece of chalk and in the other, she's got a yellow chalk brush and she has some light purple shoes on. And since she's a teacher, we could put her right inside the classroom. Next up, we'll check out Polly. She's got a light purple dress with a white collar and a matching purple headband. In one hand, she has a piece of chalk and she's wearing some teal shoes. That outfit does not match. <laughs> Let's put her at this desk over here. Hey, Polly. That's good. She's just taking a snooze. <laughs> and next up is either Mitzi or Dixie. And if it's not one of those, then it's the other. What? No. You know what I mean. Either way, whoever this is has brown hair and pigtails with white elastic bands, a teal dress with a white collar, and dark blue shoes. There. She could be doing gymnastics or whatever in a dress. Why not? And lastly, we have the other possible Mitzi slash Dixie. <laughs> Whoever she is, she's got brown skin, brown hair pulled up into a bun, a pink shirt, and some teal pants. Her shoes are blue and they match her backpack as well as a book that's in her hand. Oh, nope. And since it looks like she's getting ready to go to school, we'll uh, put her on the way to school. Wait, fail. There we go. And now we can find out about our light up schoolhouse. Polly wants to show her friends how super the schoolhouse really is. The clock really lights up when it's time for school. Polly says hi to Miss Lila and shows Mitzi and Dixie how the vending machines can light up too. Now it's time for a fun trip to the toy shop. Typo! <laughs> it says now it's times for a fun trip to the toy shop. Let's travel back to the past and uh, teach spelling to whoever okayed this box. <laughs> It's kind of funny to uh, realize that I still have six more to open. Luckily, these are smaller and don't have any light up features, so they should go a lot quicker. If you're still here and excited to continue, excellent. I hope you're enjoying this video as much as I am enjoying filming it for you. And we have moved on to the toy shop. Here is our toy shop. It's very cute. It's a pink building with white framed windows and doors. Look how cute it is. And it's got a yellow roof. And then right here, we have a little sign that says toys. Out front, there's a teal slide and a little red and yellow airplane, which moves around. We've got our classic pink poly sidewalk. And then I wanted to say purple concrete, but it's very possible that it's that rubbery ground material that they use at some parks. And then we've also got a little set of purple steps. So cute. Lining the walls where the windows would be, we have a few items like an upside down skateboard, a jump rope, some roller skates, a xylophone, and a boomerang. In the center, we've got this counter where the cashier would be. So there's a kite, a box that has a baseball bat and a small baseball. And then I think that might be a small boat. Then we've got a pink register and a sticker on the back wall showing off some more toys. And then we've got a double-sided set of purple stairs that go around the cashier's desk to the second floor. And up here, we've got a little dollhouse, which is really funny if you think about it. This super teeny Polly Pocket playset has a little playset inside it. <laughs> we've got some shelves. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what that is. At first I thought it might have been a computer, then I'm thinking it's a little arcade. It's hard to tell, I have no clue, not gonna lie. And then in this back corner here, it's hard to see, but there is a little racetrack with remote controlled cars, and directly in the center is a teal and light orange rocking horse, and it moves. And now it's time to find the characters that come with the toy shop. So we need Mayor Polly, and we need Mimi. I hit both my elbow and dropped my box. 
Here's our characters, and they were some of the extras that came out of the bigger packs when I opened them. First, we have Mayor Polly. Gotta love how Mattel always stands by their motto. The girls can be anything because she definitely looks like she's barely 10, but yet she's the mayor of Pollyville. Anyways, here is our Mayor Polly. She's wearing a light, light blue dress with a matching headband. Her blonde hair is up in a ponytail with a pink scrunchie, and she's wearing some blue shoes. In her hand, she has a very teeny doll dressed in pink with blonde hair. Let's put her in the rocking horse because all mares ride on rocking horses. Ah! And next up, we have Mimi. What about Mimi? That is such an early 2000s show. If you're old enough to know what that is and you remember Mimi and her terrible haircut, comment down below. Anyways, here is Mimi. She's got like a very ashy light brown hair, long purple dress, and yellow shoes. That's about it. Thanks for coming out, Mimi. And I believe Mimi should go in this airplane. Here she goes. Whee! Whee! Time for our story. Mayor Polly invites her friend Mimi to play with the moving rocking horse and rotating airplane. They look at all the great toys and then decide to visit the pet store. Where is the pet store? Oh, it's probably the one that says pets on it. Duh. I am having so, so much fun right now. Comment below if you wish you could be here with me. Ah, smelling all this basement smell. This is really pretty. <gasps> All right, so this time we have a light blue, light pink, and purple building. Lots of really nice detailing on the windows, which are framed in white. And we've got a little pink doghouse out front with a white roof, a little teal dog dish there, and of course our classic pink poly sidewalk. There's a big giant sign that says pets. He's got a little kitten in a basket there. I think that's it. Look, there's even a little bird nest on top of the chimney, but don't get excited because it's not a button. Open it up. And here is the inside. Of course, everything is really small. I'm gonna do my best to show it off after you know how I do. Underneath these blue stairs here, we've got three birdhouses on display and they've all got little price tags. In front of that, we have a yellow countertop with some towels and stuff like that. So it's probably a little pet care area. On this side of the stairs, we've got a little pink and teal pet bed with a sticker on the wall showing some leashes, bird cages, a little fish tank there, hamster cages, all those fun things. And a little stack of something in the corner, don't know what they are. And then we've got a cute little rabbit hutch with which probably opens. It does! And there's a little bunny in there. At the top of the stairs, we have a sticker to look like a little blue carpet, which is really cute. And that leads us to the top floor. Whoa, this is the easiest one we've been able to see. We've got another food dish up here. This time it's purple. A little carpet to greet us. We've got a green and pink parrot. We've got a little hexagon area for animals. It looks like there's little bits of straw in there though. It's hard to see. And then we've got a bathtub to bathe the animals and little brushes and ointments and such on the counter. Very, very cute. I like how there's details of wood on the floor so it looks like realistic and tiles on the first floor. All right, time to find our characters. You think they would be Polly and Mimi since the story just said that they were going to the pet store, but no, <laughs> it's someone else. So according to my story, I'm going to need Polly and Dana. And they are more of the ones that came as extras. So here's our Polly, here's our Dana, here's our cat, and here's our dog. First up, we have Polly. She's wearing very light lilac overalls with matching shoes and headband on top of a light blue shirt. And in her hand, she's got a pet brush. Looks like Mayor Polly works at all of these stores. And next up, we've got Dana. Dana has short red hair with freckles on her face, which is why I love her. She's wearing a very light green dress with purple shoes. That's about it. And Dana can go over here to check on that bunny. And this is the first set that we're gonna get that comes with pets. So, the first one, what the heck kind of cat is that? Anyways, sorry about that. The first one we have is a cat. It's very creepy looking. It kind of looks like a skunk mixed with a cat mixed with E.T. <laughs> but anyways, it's a black cat with a white tipped tail, white eyes, white front paws, and a white patch on its chest. It's just really weird, but it said it was a cat, so sure. On its way down there, it doesn't look so weird, but we know better. No, Dana fell. And the second pet is an orange Saint Bernard. This is a Beethoven dog. Let me know if you remember Beethoven. If you do, you might be almost 30. So we've got an orange and white Beethoven dog, otherwise known as a Saint Bernard. And the reason I know this is because he's got this little tiny part wrapped around his neck, which is what this type of dog breed used to use to deliver medical supplies out in the mountains. We have another puppy. It's in a begging position and it's light and dark brown. The back has most of the brown and then on this side it's just a patch across his face. That was the pet store. This Pollyville favorite is filled with sweet and playful pets. Polly and Dana play with the cute puppy and kitty and see the rabbit hutch open. Maybe now is the time for a cool drink at the beach cafe. A beach cafe! <laughs> This is our beach cafe. It's a minty colored building with a pink roof. 
Once again, we've got white framed windows and posts and such with some nice yellow sun accents. It's really cute. It looks like it's on the beach, so this is all colored like sand. And we've got some footprints. And on this side, we've got a shovel and pail. Down in front, our classic sidewalk, as well as a little table set up. We've got a grayish light pink chair and a bright pink one with a yellow and blue drink on a table. And then in the back behind them, there's a cooler with popsicles, freezies, and ice cream. And it opens and closes on each side with a sliding pink door. Then we've got a sign that says cafe. Ooh, it's so pretty. The entire inside is that same minty color. The main floor just has the customer service desk and it looks like there's two drinks on it. Not sure what that is. There's some art on the back wall and a pink staircase that leads up to the second floor. This is more like a beach house, I think, than a cafe. <laughs> the top floor has a seating area to look out the window and there's another light pink chair and a dark pink chair. One with a blue cushion and one with a purple cushion. Then there's some yellow curtains that frame the window. On this side, the same window with yellow curtains. It also has a little kitchenette area. There's pink cupboards, drawers, a white countertop, little bottles, and a small stove. So I guess we need Polly and Lulu. First we'll check out Polly. This time she's got her blonde hair in a ponytail with a pink scrunchie. She's wearing a white t-shirt with some pink around the collar and the ends of the sleeves. Blue shorts and white and blue running shoes. And in her hand she's holding an ice cream cone. Looks like it might be strawberry. Enjoy that. And where did Lulu go? Ah! She got crushed by the building like the Wicked Witch of the West. <gasps> no. It looks like Lulu is from the past. Are you from the past? That was terrible. She's wearing a one-piece bathing suit with yellow and purple stripes, but it looks like the ones from the 50s with shorts. She's got short brown hair that's kind of styled into a bob, and she's got a light blue ball in her hand. No shoes, but she's at the beach. And she's just waiting for service. She's asking if they have a bathroom. <laughs> this is the Beach Cafe, a most popular spot for summertime fun in Polly. Polly and Lulu slide the freezer open for treats and decide it's time to go off to Polly's cozy cottage after their fun day of shopping and snacking. Aha! Which is right here. Cozy cottage time, doo doo doo. Wow, that's cute. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said cute in this video, but if you want to go back and watch it, just tell me. Here is Polly's cozy cottage, or at least I'm assuming it's Polly's. It's a white brick building with a pink roof, but this time we have yellow framed windows and a yellow picket fence. There's our classic Polly sidewalk. We've also got a light purple cobblestone to the side and leading up to the front door. We've got some grass and white and pink roses, as well as a light purple mailbox. And it looks like no one's checked the mail in a while. And I think the gate would actually open, doesn't it? Oh, it opens inward. Ta-da! Here's the main floor. It's white on the inside. It's got a blue and squiggly purple wallpaper in the back with some framed pictures and mirrors. There's a light yellow couch with a green throw pillow. We've got a little TV on top of a side table. Over here we've got a good old-fashioned phone on top of a little round table. There's a dog asleep on a pink carpet. And then we've got a fireplace with some photos and maybe some pottery on top of the mantle. We've got a set of blue and light purple stairs going up to the second floor, which looks like it might be holding a slumber party tonight. We've got a blue dresser and mirror, a blue little table with a purple stereo on it, a small purple bed with pillows, and then on the floor we've got two sleeping bags. One is green with a white pillow and the other is pink and purple. There's a few things like two pink mugs, a green mug, a Walkman and headphones, and a book. This is a sign of the times right here. Time to find out who goes with it. Polly comes first, as usual. Her blonde hair is down with a pink headband and pink slippers. She's wearing a white and blue striped set of pajamas, and she's got a little brown teddy bear in her hand. And where shall we put her? She's up on the top floor getting ready for bed. Next up, we've got Midge. Midge has long red hair and is also wearing pajamas. Hers are white with purple polka dots and collar and green slippers. And she can go down on the first floor. She's getting ready to make some popcorn or something. Polly and Midge swing the front gate open on their way to a fun slumber party. Everyone has has fun telling scary stories before falling asleep. And next up, we'll check out the summer house. We've only got two left. Here is the summer house. It is very yellow all the way around with a blue roof. We've got our classic poly sidewalk. This time, in addition to the green grass, we have a pool. At the front of a house though, that's kind of weird to me. 
We've got a yellow picket fence that encases said pool as well. We've got some purple awnings over the white framed windows with shutters. Apparently they have a la carte service and a very cute minty green door. There's also a picnic set up out front with two lounge chairs, one in light purple and one in pink with a very small table and drinks. There's a little hose wound up on the front lawn as well. We even have a little rooster weather vane. Wait a minute, we also have a side entrance. I didn't even notice that. Is there something over there? No. Time to open it up and check out the inside. Ooh. Ooh, more things. Here is the main floor. So there's the little set of stairs leading out to the side door. We have what looks like a woven pink carpet in the center. We've got a very small kitchen with a light purple stove and a pink fridge. An old 50s kind of fridge. It opens up and there are lots of bottles and products on the inside. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. I love tiny things. We've got little sticker windows and some purple and green steps leading up to the second floor. And up here we've got a little table with a seashell collection. A light purple table with an old fan. We've got a rug with some seashells on it and purple squiggles, some scuba gear, and then a set of bunk beds. Blue on the bottom, green on the top with white pillows. And here are our characters. Polly and Alexia. Not gonna lie, Alexia looks different than she did in my last set. Here is our super cool Polly. I have no clue what is going on with her hair. The bangs are not cool. I looked up close because I thought at first that it was a paint defect, but no, that is how her hair is styled. <laughs> so she's got her blonde hair up in a ponytail with a pink scrunchie as well as a pink headband. She's also wearing some pretty nifty blue shades and a green bathing suit. And she's also wearing white sneakers. We'll put her inside of that pool floaty. Just chilling. Oh, it even had a little diving board. A very little diving diving board. Shh, shh. Woo! Cannonball with straight legs is not a good idea. And next up we have Alexia. She's got short brown hair and is wearing some yellow shoes with a two-piece blue bathing suit. Oh, there she is. She's looking for a cool drink in the fridge. Polyville in summer is a great place to be. Polly and Alexia open up the refrigerator door for frosty drinks to cool off from the summer sun. They make plans for their winter ski trip at Polly's beautiful ski lodge, a great place for winter fun. And sadly guys, we only have one more set to open. The fun is coming to an end. How am I going to top this? Put it right there. Here is our ski lodge. It's a very light purple log cabin with blue framed windows and shutters. It's got a white roof with icicles dripping down the front and a pink chimney with snow on top. I'm not gonna lie, I have no clue what that is. I thought it was a cat at first, but I don't know. If you think you know what that is, just tell me. Cause right now it kinda just looks like the building is getting set on fire. It's got the classic pink poly sidewalk. How is their ski lodge with snow, but beautiful green grass at the same time and no snow covering the sidewalk, just saying. Out front, we've got our cute little evergreen tree, a sled and some skis and I don't know what that is. It kind of looks like a feeding trough, but I don't know why. On the inside, the main floor has a slight step up. So this one here coming in from the door has a very fuzzy blue carpet and a pet bowl with a bone in it. There's a small wooden table with a spoon, cup, and bowl and a small pink chair with a pink cushion. Over here, we've got a fireplace with a photo on the mantel. And just beside it, there's a small stack of logs, a pink chair with a blue cushion and some boots. So somebody's gonna sit there and warm their feet by the fire. In the back here, we've got a blue wall with a cuckoo clock on it and a pink ladder that leads up to the second floor which funny enough has cupboards and a sink in blue if that matters to you with a little bar of soap but no toilet we've also got a pink and white vanity with three mirrors and a little chair that's white and blue and a big comfy bed the white blanket flips open and it's covered in evergreen trees and on the inside we've got pink sheets and a big puffy blue pillow so this reminds me of the magical move in Polyville where the bed flips open and Polly gets inside but this one is not magical or moving and one thing I like about most Polly Pocket sets is the roof also acts as the support to allow you to play without having to prop up your actual play set. So that's pretty great. We need our last set of characters. And since there's only two left, I could safely assume it's these guys. Wait a minute, where's that pet shop? I was wondering why there was a big giant St. Bernard when that's more of a mountain dog and it didn't fit in those little playset spots. It's because it's supposed to go over here. That makes so much more sense. Jen's a dodo. We've already checked out the St. Bernard though, so ta-da! Here he is. I'm gonna name him Bernard. Oh, I guess the dog already has a name, guys. Here is Polly and she looks amazing. I would totally rock this outfit. She's wearing a one-piece snowsuit all in blue, teal mittens, and a pink scarf. Her long blonde hair is left down, but she does have 
have some pink snow goggles. So it kind of looks like a headband because it's pulling her hair out of the way. It's very cute. She's also got some pink winter boots. We're gonna put her over here. She just likes to sleep in her winter gear because that's not weird at all. Where's Lulu, the friend that came instead of Alexia? Tell me why Polly and Alexia were planning their trip to the ski lodge, but she brought Lulu instead. That just seems a little terrible. Lulu's got some light brown hair pulled back into a ponytail and she's wearing a green coat with white fur around the neck, the wrists, and the bottom. Ah! Lulu fell. She's also wearing some white winter boots, pink tights, mitts, and hat with a green pom-pom. We'll just put her down here where she can get ready to go skiing. During the winter, Polly, Lulu, and their puppy, Nellie, open up the bed and snuggle under the blanket during the cold winter nights in Pollyville. It's a wonderful place to be. All right, guys, we knew this moment would come. We are sadly all done opening our Polly Pocket stuff. What I'm gonna do now is set up the play mat and put all of these on it to show it off one final time. So here it is, all set up. I think it's really cool, and I'm gonna point out that they've added different sections, like this one's a wintry area, which makes sense for the ski lodge, and then down in the bottom, we have a beachy area which is perfect for the beach cafe. Another cool thing is that they've added not only grass and trees and shrubs and stuff, but we've got some playground equipment, tennis courts, fountains, ponds with ducks and stuff. It sets the scene without having to build a scene. But the thing that I like most about this mat, and uh, maybe other people wouldn't notice, but I did, is that that classic pink Polly Pocket sidewalk is still here, but the fact that they've made them the exact size as the ones on the play sets is perfect, because that means you can set up your play sets and it continues right across as if it's meant to be there. It doesn't work out so much with this one because it's a corner piece, but these are meant to be lined up together on a floor or on a table so you can make your own Polly Pocket Town. And just to go along with the sidewalks, I'll point out that I like this. They've left big gaps leading to the sidewalks so you have an idea of where you could put houses and such. And they are different sizes, so it gives you an idea of what would fit there. It's up to you regardless. If you want your house, your schoolhouse to be in the middle of the pond, go for it. I mean, hopefully your uh, students can swim, but it's all up to you. <laughs> Okay guys, you've reached the end of the video, and if you're still here, then I certainly hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it for you, and uh, that just sounded like I yelled at you. Didn't mean to, sorry. <laughs> but for real, I hope you enjoyed the video. It did take me a long time because I wanted to give it the attention it deserves, and it is a very long video. I am really sorry about that. But this beauty was totally worth it. And being 100% honest, I never would have been able to get it without you guys because the husband would have said no. <laughs> oh, thanks guys. <laughs> Now, as much as I'd love for you to believe that I filmed this in a day or two because I am Superwoman, that's not true. And I am way too honest of a person to begin lying now, so the truth is, it's taken a while. I started filming this December 27th. That's when we went to get the whole super set to begin with. And I knew I wanted to do something special for you guys for when I finally did hit 100,000 subscribers. I just didn't expect the date to come so quickly, and I sort of had to rush this last two weeks to get this done for you. But I could not be happier with the turnout, except if it was like professionally done by movie studio quality people but I'm just one person okay so, <laughs> so this is what you get anyways I hope you enjoyed it but before we end the video I would say we I'm so royal I just want to thank you guys one last time just for everything I feel like I'm some corny person just chilling on a chair thanking you guys for letting me get a toy <laughs> but the truth is like I enjoy this it's it's a hobby that I truly enjoy because I got to meet so many of you even if it's not in real life I feel like I've seen some of you guys comment like on every single video I've ever had which is kind of exciting and not gonna lie one time I didn't see a comment from a certain person and I got worried about them I was so worried because I hadn't heard from her in a while and then all of a sudden she popped up again and I was so relieved to see her there that was a little off topic the point is I actually remember when people message me and there's like 50 names standing out in my head because I see them all the time. So obviously you're coming back and that it just, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Thank you. That's it. Just thank you. You guys are the greatest and I love you so much. I don't know what I just did that for. <laughs> Anyways, you know the drill now. If you know somebody who would enjoy watching this video because you think this is amazing and it's the only one on YouTube, which is correct, then you should probably share it with them. If they love vintage toys, Polly Pockets, random one-off YouTube videos or Jen's awesome face that's covered only in four pimples today, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed this video yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below everything you loved about this video, everything you hated, or feel free to scream at me for opening an amazing, <laughs> amazing thing that I probably had no business ever opening. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!